Hi, this is Asim. This is Sujoy. This is Amrita. And you're listening to Khandan, a Bollywood podcast about the three main Khans of the Hindi film industry. Amir, Salman, and Shara. Hi, you're listening to Khandan, a Bollywood podcast regular feed. Thank you so much for your support over the years. We now have a Patreon channel with bonus content and exclusive merch for those of you who would like to support us. Every dollar goes towards creating more and better content. Visit us at patreon.com slash Khandan podcast. Hi and welcome to a new episode of Khandan podcast. My name is Asim Bernie and I'm joined by my lovely co-host Amrita and still joining us Shakila Get Filmy. Hi Shakila. Hi Amrita. Hi Asim. Hi Amrita. Hi Shakila. Welcome to the show. Again, Sujoy couldn't join us this time, although he really, really wanted to. I've, I've yeah. never felt this much that Sujoy wanted to yeah. join the podcast and he couldn't that this yeah. episode, these two last two episodes. Really right? missing him. I wanted to hear about his <laughs> take on the romantics, especially. Yeah. I know he's got like lots of thoughts and he really wanted to share it with us, but it just didn't work out. Yeah, but he'll be back on the next one, inshallah. And uh, if uh, people do want to ask him in real time what his thoughts on romantics or other things are, they can come to the meetup that we're going to be organizing in April. And Amrita, how can people know more about the meetup? Uh, you can find out more by subscribing to our newsletter at khanda.substack.com. And the newsletter is a great way for you to get in touch with other people in your city who might want to do local meetups of your own. Um, and also we give, we do like giveaways. Um, so we always get like a lot of PR and merch stuff for movies, not just Hindi stuff, but from other languages. And, uh, for example, for February, we are doing a giveaway of two Blu-rays of Timothy Chalamet's new film called Bones and All. Um, and it's from the same director as uh, did Call Me By Your Name. So if you would like those Blu-rays, then all you need to do is subscribe to our newsletter. We are not going to be sending it to you like all the time. So you don't have to worry about us clogging up your inbox or anything. And um, basically, it's a great way to get free stuff and also find out what else we are up to. Yeah, it's uh, and also a big shout out to everybody that's already signed up. You know, yes. it's a lot of people that signed up and it's putting pressure on Amrita to start delivering those <laughs> newsletters. <laughs> uh, there's a reason why the newsletter is not going to be like clogging up your inbox. <laughs> So this episode, we are talking about Jab Tak Hai Jaan. This is kind of like a two-parter with our Yash Raj Romantics, Yash Chopra um, episodes that we were doing. And plus also, you know, it's a Khan movie. So obviously, we we're going to talk about it. And we hadn't talked about it yet. Uh, Shakila, you picked out this movie, which was very smart of you. Why did you pick out Jab Tak Hai Jaan? Well, one, because it was fresh on my mind having watched the Romantics. And uh, having just watched the Romantics and it's Yash Chopra's last film and all of that. But also, I think it it's also a very, um, it's a very mixed film. Right? It's very Aditya Chopra and Yash Chopra. And it's a very interesting study of like the mishmash of the two and how, at least for me, it ends up not quite working in either direction. Mm. So, yeah, I just thought that was, it was an interesting like mashup of the two, father and son um, as well. Mm. Yeah. What, what what were your memories, Amrita, of uh, Jab Tak Hai Jaan before you did the rewatch? Like, where did the, where did the movie kind of stand for you? So it's really funny. Um, I remember two things. Well, I remember three things, and all of them were about the leads. One is that when this movie came out, and Katrina was the the heroine, and everybody was just like, "Really, her?" <laughs> like that was like one whole thing and then the other was like people were just ragging on Anushka Sharma mm. um, 
like this was the phase where she literally could not do anything right like everybody was just like she's so annoying like why is she looking like that like you know she um they, they were body shaming her for being too fit they were talking about how you know her her personality was too annoying like i was like that's the character like what the hell so i remember that um and then i remember <laughs> So this is, I realized that there's this thing that I think like Beth and I do it a lot, but also like I feel social media does this with us and that's where we picked up the habit, which is that every time Shah Rukh does a movie, we all behave as if it's the first time that he's been hot. <laughs> like oh my god like how did this happen like like when Patan came out and everybody was like oh my god like can you believe it like is that Shahrukh like why is he so hot <laughs> and then I remember that we did the same thing for Raiz we did the same thing yes. for Dr. Hedja <laughs> basically Shahrukh with a beard right yeah. like that's, yeah. that's how it works even Hatim except in hair up who's a beard, like, a beard. Yeah. his hair <laughs> <laughs> um so that was like a silly thing that i remembered um and then i remembered like some somebody was <laughs> saying that i can't remember who said it but they were just like it's a very aptly named film because it feels like it's going to run for the rest of your life <laughs> like <laughs> so long <laughs> god <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I think men after a certain age should just have a beard. I think that's probably the best we can look. Yeah. Um, and I think Shah Rukh has understood that. And he's, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see a lot of more beard in there. Yes. Uh, because it feels odd when he shaves, even in this movie. I was like, why? Why Why are you doing that? Like, get, 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 get me back to beard. Um, I remember this movie because we were all grown ups when this movie came out. Like, I remember, like, it, it's a very... Like, internet was the way it is now, you know, Twitter was around, yeah. movie reviews were around, YouTube was around, and this movie was very much everywhere, you know, it had, like, I know, like, there's bloggers that I know that are in the movies, there's journalists and people that I know that are background dancers in this movie, so I remember this movie really, really well, the disco around it, and the big thing was, obviously, this is Yash Chopra's last movie, and... I I I think a lot of people were kind of um gave it a pass in a way like because it was Yash Chopra's last movie nobody wanted to be really hard about like really uh, hard, uh cri- criticize it too much but it also was one of those movies that kind of didn't like people don't sing the songs like Shahrukh ki Mangetar is not making memes out of Shahrukh looking hot in this one with Katrina or Anushka it seems to be one of those like even in terms of soundtrack you know like this is A.R. Rahman working with Yashraj it's something that's literally never happened before and it's a very mid soundtrack like none of these songs are like wow you know like his best songs ever and I think people had a lot of high expectations a lot of high o- hopes and None of that really kind of, I think people were a bit let down, unfortunately. And uh, I know that I really loved, I, I enjoyed the movie. I didn't hate it as much as everybody else seemed to. But I also felt I needed to rewatch it. And I'm glad we kind of kept it for the Khandan podcast and this time to kind of, you know, have another look at this movie. Shakila, what, do, what did you think of the, of the rewatch? Did it change your opinion? Did you like it a bit more? What were your kind of general thoughts? Um, well, it was very interesting. I have a lot of thoughts about this film. Yeah. Quickly, I'll say, just on the rewatch, what I'll say is that I actually didn't find Katrina to be as bad this time. Yeah. She's legit good. She's, not, she's, no, no, no. I think yeah. she's actually really she's good She's actually this. really good at this. Because I remember when I watched it the first time, I was like, oh, I can't believe she got to be a Yashraj hero, a Yash Chopra yeah. hero, not even Yashraj hero. You know, I was very like, oh, how, how is that possible? But I actually noticed this time she was actually very good in most of the scenes, except for a couple of crucial ones where I think it didn't last. She can't cry. She can't cry. That's yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um, but, but apart from that, she was great. She was great. Yeah, she was great. Um, Anushka was also great. Again, she had those like you uh, and Mirta was saying in the last ep- episode. Um, how she had these like straight on the nose dialogues like oh I'm a bad bitch or whatever and it's like oh who talks like that how do you even deliver a dialogue like that you know <laughs> but she was also fine um, 
Okay, so now to kind of back up, right? Jab tak hai jaan is supposed to be kind of a take on the end of the affair, right? Have you guys... So there's the novel and then there's the movie with Julianne Moore and Ralph Fiennes. Have you guys seen that? I don't know anything yes. about this, so please explain. I, I've not heard of this movie. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know so this is why Jab Tak Hai Jaan, I was very excited about it because end of the affair, the movie I had watched when it came out um, in like the, in 2000, the year 2000. And I was very intrigued by the concept, this whole idea of like this woman makes a promise to God because she thinks her lover has died. And then she makes this promise and he comes back to life. And like, it sounds absurd on the surface, right? And I think in the movie also, in Jabta Khe Jaan, it comes across as a bit absurd. But in End of the Affair with Julianne Moore and, uh, Moore and Ralph Fiennes, it they really like, they're, the way they've presented that idea is very, very convincing. And mm. it takes a bit of a different turn. Like, so they, they, you know, they emphasize the part about faith and what it means to have faith. And this, you know, Julianne's kind of relationship with God and how, you know, she breaks that promise. And then in that movie, she actually starts to get sick after she breaks the promise. And I think, I can't remember, I think she dies in um, or maybe not. I can't remember. But something, it's like it takes a bit of a different track. So in this movie, when I watched that, I felt like this is a very Bollywood concept. And when I heard that Yash Chopra was making it, I was like, yes. You know, this is very, like, right up his alley. It's very heavy. It's a bit, like, it has a lot of gravitas. You know, it's a very deep kind of theme. It requires, like, mature actors. I wonder, that's why I keep wondering how much of Aditya Chopra was like injected into this? Because when I watch it, at every step, I feel like Aditya is saying, like, no, Dad, we need to make it for the youth. We need to make it for yeah. the youth. We need to make it palatable for the youth. So therefore, the design of Anushka's character, the casting of Katrina, um, the younger portions, which I feel like, I mean, I feel like Yash Chopra would just have made the whole thing more mature. Um, from the mm. get go, you know, instead of meeting this like young portion when they're like in their twenties, which to me is like the weakest part of the film. Um, yes. Well, uh, there's a lot of weak parts of the film, but that I just <laughs> <laughs> you know that whole youth portion, uh, they were falling in love, was like unnecessary. Um, so oh, yeah. but it gave us sass. Oh God. Yeah. I saw a tweet the other day. It was like, I'm still suffocating. Listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God. No, but I think like what Shakela saying is basically the crux of the matter, which is that the entire plot hinges on the fact that Katrina is a woman of faith. But the way that it is presented is not that she is a woman of faith, but that she's some sort of like developmentally challenged, <laughs> yes. you know, like, child who is sort of bargaining for things that she wants done um and there's no like cohesion like she's going to the church like first of all why is she going to the church and it's not even like near her house or anything like okay fine like, it's near my house it's near my house though like it's literally i can see it from my window that church like it's that's where it is and then she like at the end of it she's like standing with uh puja ki thali to like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like what even he even calls it out he's like oh so now you're you've left jesus, jesus. like what what is happening um so it's like it's very weird like and i don't understand this whole conviction that aditya chopra seems to have that young people in india are not religious because that makes no sense to me. Like, have you ever been to the subcontinent? Like, everybody here, like, even if you don't have faith, you have religion, you know? <laughs> like, you can't get away from religion in this country. So, the idea that young people will look at a woman who um, has faith and therefore runs her life according to that um, and will not understand it or respect it that is just really weird to me. Um, and I, again, like, I do see the fine hand of Mr. Chopra the Younger. 
when i was watching the romantics uh, adi chopra said you know when we were making dam laga ke haisha i quickly realized this is not my world uh-huh. and i don't feel jab tak his jaan hai jaan is his world either yes. like yeah. this idea that you know like i feel even karan johar got closer in uh, ae dil hai mushkil than adi chopra ever does with jab tak hai jaan like this idea of Shahrukh being a 28 year old 25 year old refugee from India trying to make his you know world in in London selling fish and singing songs on South Bank this is not Adi Chopra's world and it makes it for really really odd choices um even this idea that you're saying about Katrina um being you know initially also like this movie has that structure of flashback me flashback so Anushka Sharma is reading a book uh, a notebook a diary that Sharok is keeping then Sharok flashes back to the uh, Katrina praying to Jesus Saab and then Jesus Saab flashback is that she was a white child earlier who was a full nazi says i don't like brown boys because they smell bad i was like how is this structure even working is, like this doesn't why was this doesn't she make white any sense when she was a kid like <laughs> when neetu singh and anupam kher are our dad like i was like i also had forgotten that neetu singh was in this so i was like oh maybe anupam kher got married to a white lady but like this no. doesn't make any sense <laughs> so bizarre um i feel like the one portion of the film that really was like essentially quintessentially yash chopra was the rishi kapoor and neetu singh like that part yes. felt yeah. had that gravitas and that maturity and that style that is your chopra you know yeah. so i watched this movie on amazon prime because that's where all the yrf stuff is in india i don't know about outside india and um in the trivia section that they have when you know like when scenes are playing out um when sans was playing they said that apparently that was directed by aditya chopra because yash chopra wanted it to be filmed by someone young to capture what young love looks like and i'm like mm, is it though yeah <laughs> <laughs> i i will say i appreciate the fact that yash chopra right from his earliest films um has never been one of those people who like try to pretend that when two people fall in love then all they do is hold hands like you know it's always like there's a physical aspect to it and you know like it doesn't matter whether they're married or they're not married and if they're married then they're going at it like rabbits um and i really appreciate that about him because i think he's one of the very few directors who actually does it and he doesn't do it in like a lechy way like he does it in a, a sort of sexy way um and that sort of like continued with like you could see like sharuk really did it no way to put his hands in certain uh, scenes you know way he, <laughs> he looks so awkward yeah. it's so funny <laughs> he's just like mm, should i just really do this um and katrina is actually sort of and again like that's who sharuk is like you know he's just like katrina take the lead um and that's when you know you should have had an intimacy coordinator but you know like i don't know if that's a thing in india even now um but Yeah like um the little speech that um again that uh, Akira gives I do like the fact that Akira is so unapologetically uh, type A like she's just like you don't know me and she always and she she so she's from Delhi so I think that's why they make her say to all the time to everybody that she meets and I'm like I know she's from Delhi but in like delhi people are and that bad also like the, this is the thing like you don't just go up to somebody for the first time in a foreign country and be like tu mujhe nahi janti main badi cheez hu like you don't do that but anyway so she she says that you know like you don't know me but i've always been the best in everything that i do uh and the way she says it also to katrina is like really rude she's like tu mujhe nahi janti but like mere khayalon mein bhi like uh mai tujhse kai milo aage thi 
Hey, wow. Like, love yourself, but that's a little hard for me to take. Um, and poor Katrina is just standing there like, okay, like, fine, tell me how I'm inferior. Um, but, <laughs> but it is Katrina though. Like, you're literally <laughs> looking at her. She doesn't even need to say anything. It's already Katrina, man. Like, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but Anushka's kind of like, Akira is like, on the one hand, she's like really great because she's, you know, she's full of self-confidence. She goes after everything that she wants. Uh, she fits in with the boys. They all, you know, are a little bit in love with her. Uh, even Summer with his, you know, big romance is, you know, he has a soft spot for her because she's just one of those people. Um, charismatic, uh, ambitious, like I love all those things about her. But then in the middle of it, Aditya Chopra writes these lines where she's like, I'm a 21 year old girl. I don't, ha- I don't believe in love. And I'm like, have you so, read? Uh, shall a- I read the line, Amrita? Yes. <laughs> it's a, uh, I'm a 21 year old girl, uh, instant make out, instant breakup. Pehle sex hota hai, phir sochte hai ke love hota hai ke nahi. <laughs> that's that's the literal line that she said. I, I almost thought she was gonna say, "Main salesman hu." You know, like. <laughs> Did you like, Chopra's like uh, it's so icky when like they think they know how to like inject the sex and like you know one night stands and whatnot, and they really make it so cringy. Like, bro, it doesn't work like that. Or, like you know, just bizarre, bizarre presentation. Like, like, if, have you ever met a 21-year-old girl? Like, there is literally nobody, no one more optimistic about love than a 21, your average 21-year-old girl. I mean, it just, oh, oh my God. But um, but he, yeah. like, he continues just, this track in Bishikri, right? Yeah. Like, this is the kind of, yeah. this is Vani's character yes. too, yeah. right? In Bishikri. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So, so that was what I was going for because when I was watching Sans this time, I was like, Oh, so this is where Bifikri started. Like, he mm. was, you know, he was directing Shah Rukh and Katrina making out all over London, uh, <laughs> including in a telephone booth for some weird reason. And he was like, oh, I should do this with somebody who is more interested in it than Shah Rukh, because <laughs> Shah Rukh clearly was not for it. Um... And he got Ranveer, uh, Ranveer Singh and Vani Kapoor to do it. But then what he miscalculated was that, well, the audience wants to see Shah Rukh make out with, you know, Katrina or whoever. And he was good with Katrina in this film. Like, I feel, I feel like, you know, like we made a joke of it when the movie first came out about like how Shah Rukh could have chemistry with a tree. But, um, he and, like, I believe them as a couple. Hmm. I still don't want to see them kiss. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Like you could I, see like, that Sharuk didn't want to do it. Yeah. I don't think anybody wants to do it. And I think this is what's changed between 2012 and today that I think filmmakers have a much better handle on how to incorporate that sort of a physical intimacy where in 2012 it was still a bit too early and we didn't have the stars that we have now, right? Like, now, nobody even bats an eye. But at that time, this was a big deal for Shah Rukh. He's never done it. And he's probably doing it because it's Yash, Yash Chopra asking him to do it or Adi asking him to do it. Katrina's doing it. Maybe, you know, it's a safe space for her to do it. But it just looks awkward. And also, it's not the most, like, sexiest of places. <laughs> like, the underground station in London. I don't know. It's very noisy there. And then she also does this... Uh, like, what you're saying also about, you know, like, they're making out in the phone booth. Like, do you know Ew. how bad they smell those phone booths? Ew. They're basically like public toilets, you know? Like, the the amount of, you know, um, they had to get over themselves physically to do this is uh, insane, you know? I mean, just yeah. think about the way Yash Chopra did, like, Neela Asma and Silsila, you know? Like, I mean, they were getting it on in Silsila too, you know? But those scenes were yeah. actually sensuous and sexy, like, actually sexy. Whereas everything in Jab Tak Ejaan is just, like, cringe. 
So, uh, first of all, I want to say everybody looks so pretty. And I cannot believe that we, you know, Amrita, you're saying people were making complaints about how Katrina looked, that she's not a Yashraj, Yashraj heroine, or that, you know, Anushka is too skinny, or, you know, this and that. It's insane to me because everybody is literally so pretty. There's that sequence where she's running towards the church. And Katrina has a snowflake on one or on her eyelash and she's running. Like, how, how do you even do that? Like, it's, it's amazing visual. And it reminded me of that, um, what was that movie with Imran Khan and uh, Sonam Kapoor? I hate love stories. Yeah, where he's like, teen ball chahiye mujhe maate pe, teen ball. It was like that snow, snowflake was that teen ball thing, you know? Uh, everybody is so amazing the way they look in it, but, it's that first part that I really have trouble with, like that country bumpkin Shahrukh part where he's trying to get a tutor for to learn English and she wants to learn Punjabi. Like, who the hell is Roger? Where does Roger comes from? Like, his accent is all over the place. All of those things were re- like, I had real big trouble with that. I don't know about you guys. Also, one of the things that hasn't changed for me in all the years since is <laughs> if a brown man in London walks up to a bunch of like, oh boy, he's <laughs> and is like, "Hey, I know exactly how to defuse this bomb," <laughs> and nobody's asking him where he's from. He's getting shot. Uh, yes, that was very he's funny. A, the, the cops are. You probably planted the bomb. That's <laughs> why you know how it works. That's <laughs> Oh gosh, that and it, what's what's crazy is that they could have. The whole point was to like, oh, he diffuses the bomb, he gets his memory back, right? It's like you could have staged that in so many different ways. Like, why would you have this white dude be like, oh, okay, brown dude, who's you know, like, you're, yeah, you, yeah, go ahead and diffuse the bomb, like. What the hell? I also love the fact that, you know, like, Shah Rukh is a fishmonger in Borough Market. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, the guy comes and he's like, you know, but here's my fish, but I also brought you foie gras. It's like, who buys foie gras from a fishmonger? Like, do not buy your foie gras from a fishmonger. And the dude literally buys the fish and then he goes to close Jackie Shroff's circus in Doom 3. It's the same dude. Oh, the same dude. That's what I... But also, like, the way he talks about the foie gras is as if, like, it is some sort of contraband item. Like, he's buying drugs. He's just like, oh, my yeah. God, you actually got it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And the foie gras place is, like, literally two meters away from the fish place, by the yeah. way. I just want to tell you, like, <laughs> Amrita, when you come, I can take you to the foie gras place. Oh, I'm you definitely want. going to Borough Market when I come. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Another so, um, yeah. another nice touch was the thing. The, this is classic Yash Chopra, is like the Pakistani roommate, like yes. that high chara between India and Pakistan. Like it was heartwarming to see because, like again, like back then we wouldn't even blink an eye. Like that was like yeah, it was just normal. Um, but now this many years later, after all this whole you know saffron shitstorm, it's like wow, you know. Right. It's literally two years before things went shit. Yeah. <laughs> like we still had time, you know. Uh, and it's uh, Shari- Sharib Hashmi from Family Guy, right? So we were just talking yes, about... Um, that's right. That's right. Like, I think the problem is also that the whole crux of the story is just not convincing, right? That's the problem. That's a, and I was like, like I was saying, the, cru- the one crucial scene where Katrina really needed to land it, which is right after the accident, right? When he had yeah. the, like that scene is the crucial scene. And it's like, it the, again, like I said, the one in the, the Julianne Moore movie is so profound. Like it really, like you can see her change when he, like in that movie, it's like a bomb hits, like World War II and a bomb hits their little apartment thing. And she thinks he's dead. And then she makes this promise and then he comes back. And like the change that comes over her is like chilling, you know? So, yeah. If you don't land that moment, it's like the whole film doesn't work because you're just like, "What the hell is this babyish promise you're making to God?" You know, like. But I, I don't think it was Katrina's fault. I, I just don't think the scene is written yeah. well. I don't think it's shot well. It's like in the street, in the middle, like full lighting. The, the camera is very static. It didn't like this. Should be the big story that changes everything. 
and i don't think it does that like like i don't know how it's in the movie the original one but he just gets resuscitated back on the street in full sunlight it just felt yeah, it's like just bizarre it's not it's like all the medics are there the police are there like why would there's no urgency of like he's dead yeah. you know it's like yeah. well, okay he had an accident and people are helping him out like it just doesn't very poorly written like you said poorly written poorly conceived poorly shot Be- because we do new year's resolutions every year and we forget about them by february you know like it doesn't make sense that you know like a little promise like that they just, they just don't sell that idea what do you think amrita do you do you think it's done well or is it more katrina that doesn't isn't able to act it out i think it's a little bit of both because i think with katrina if you tell her exactly what is required of her i think she can do it um but the I don't think the writing was there. Mm. Um, Because I I don't know if you saw in the at the end of the movie you see a lot of like BTS sequences of uh, Yash Chopra directing Katrina and it's he seems very happy with her performance like he seems like smiling and emotive and like he's in like he got what he wanted but I just don't think it's the whole the whole setup of it worked really well. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a very big idea. It's like this big grand idea that just the film uh keeps kind of bypassing it. Almost like it's uncomfortable with that main idea. And then it turns into like this weird love triangle and it's just very very weird treatment uh, the whole thing. And then the retrograde retrograde amnesia like what what is <laughs> what is that? Like come on. The, the, there's so many hoops the movie wants us to jump in like now he's a bomb disposal guy now he's yeah. now he has to come to london for i don't know what reason uh you know even then he's like i'm not going to come 2 minutes later i'm here already yeah. i'm wearing a stupid hat you know like all of these things that we have to just be convinced about and you know we're not i don't think the movie sells us on that unfortunately <laughs> and then also the whole second part of the movie where katrina has to kind of come back into his life and act like his wife which is like again really really weird like also like she's a very rich woman why does she need to live in his friend's house like it doesn't <laughs> even make sense like just get an airbnb like you yeah, know it doesn't yeah. that's true a lot of these things yeah it didn't make yeah, sense yeah the second me. half is very weak like it's it's i mean the first half doesn't work because the love story the young love story doesn't work and then the second half just it's like he gets the retro he goes to london then he gets the retrograde amnesia then then he's like defusing the bomb and the white people's trade like it's just so all over the place and and the drama like also like it just like there's no pacing like the pacing is so bad um emotionally it's like you don't know what to feel it's just like and then like Katrina and Anushka have like these uh, you know four or five meetings in that park and those scenes to see yeah. to me felt very flat too like you know cuz it's it's I, all cuz you you think of like the big dramatic scene with Vivek and Jaya Bachchan yeah. yeah right and like even yeah. in Kabhi Kabhi there's like uh, some scene that with the two women somewhere it's very classic mm-hmm. yash chopra but here it just doesn't have that heft There's there's this one sequence where Anushka like the one you were talking about Amrita like she makes this grand statement about how she's ahead of Katrina and Katrina is just like blinking her eyes like a lot and I don't know why they just didn't take a second shot like you know like to do shoot it again you know it doesn't even make sense to me like I know hmm right No I think uh, I think Katrina was trying to underplay it like I think that yeah. the idea was that after summer goes away from her life she's become this very like uh she's retreated away from the Tina character that she you know like some of us the reason that Tina came out and that she was so much fun and she was like you know the the gunda under the repressed good yeah. girl that exterior that she had and then once he went away like she just sort of completely collapsed into it and just became this very cold businesswoman who always dresses in like beige and uh black but what came out of it is just like <laughs> Katrina looking catatonic <laughs> while yeah. Anushka is basically insulting her to her face um, <laughs> and it's also interesting that you mentioned the behind the scenes uh, clips that they showed at the end of the film because um, 
is really funny, right? Because you see how much everybody loves Yash Chopra, mm. and you see how much Yash Chopra adores Shah Rukh. Like he's just mm. like staring at Shah Rukh with hearts in his eyes, and then he looks at Katrina, and it's always like. Why are you here? <laughs> he always looks so puzzled that she's in front of him. <laughs> it's hilarious. Even with Anushka, I have to say, like he's like, I, you know, the, it's the feeling of like, okay, I have to get along with these young people. Like these kids are the future. Let me try, you know. And he's just like not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Anushka, I felt that like yeah. he was like like uh, you know feeling the weight of his choices there. <laughs> like she's she's just too much. But I don't know, like the scenes in church, I thought like he had like a connect with Katrina. Maybe I'm you know I'm misremembering it then. Uh, also, like another odd choice is like when you Anushka sees Katrina, right? There should be like this big revelation, like oh my god, this is the woman he's he loves that he's given his life for, and she's like jumping on a trampoline, like it doesn't, like that's not how you shoot that sequence. I don't know, it's just like a lot of odd choices. And it was movie. such a cop out because, like, what is the point of making it seem like yeah. she's married with a kid when it's like, oh no, I'm not. Like, what is the point yeah. of that? Yeah, make her be married yeah. and make her then make, you know, make it a bigger thing. But I don't yeah, know why like they... Yeah, it's like they chickened out. It's like they chickened out of making that choice. Whereas, again, the backstory of Neetu Singh and Rishi Kapoor, where she, like, she ran away, like, that's so interesting and compelling, right? Like, wow. Um, that whole track, I have to say, is the, is the highlight of the film because that is such a bold track, if you think about it. Like she ran away, and they don't vilify them. They don't vilify the she. Just very, very nicely done. I feel like that is classic Yashtu. Like classic Yashtu. I mean, also it's just that we don't see enough of. I mean, Anupam Kher, but like the dad character, like she keeps talking about. You know, I, I want to do this Punjabi song for my dad. He gave away everything for to be with me, but we never really see him that much. You know, you you don't see his pain when Niti Singh goes away, and I think a lot of that were lack was lacking. And then you know, the scene with Rishi and Niti Singh has to do the, the heavy lifting to kind of put that all in balance. Right, um, right. But yeah, yeah, no, it was it was good though, and I loved in romantics that you know he mentioned that they looked at each other, they locked eyes, and that one scene was like all of the scenes and all the times they've worked together, yeah. and kind of a closure there. I thought that was very sweet that they mentioned that specifically. What do you guys feel of the soundtrack and the songs? Like just the, you know, like the way they're shot. Like oh, that's always a big highlight for Yash Chopra movies. Um, and A.R. Rahman was c- composing it. Uh, Amrita, what did you think of the songs? Like the, the soundtrack is is had six seven songs in it. I think. I think here is a beautiful song, and it's still a beautiful song. Um, I think Chala is also a really good song, but um, it doesn't suit Shah Rukh. It doesn't suit, like, yeah. Rabbi, Rabbi Shergill's voice yeah. and Shah Rukh's mannerism do not go well. It's yeah. very weirdly lip synced, I yeah. feel. I also don't think Sans should have been lip synced. I think it works better mm. as, like, a. Uh, it was just like a disconnect between the visuals and the song itself. Like, it made no sense mm. to me. Um, mm. I thought Akira was excellent. Like, there was yes. a fun little song. Like, Anushka was great in it. Like, it had all the energy that, like, a lot of the other songs didn't have. Um, and I have to give Yash Chopra a shout out for the extended, like, sequence starting with um, him inviting her to the underground dance party. Mm. Because it's like the dance party and then literally it just bleeds into Ishk Shava. And that goes mm. on for like about 10, 15 minutes. And yeah. then there's like a quick break. And then again, it's like her singing here. Um, yeah. So it's like, you know, like a good 20 minutes of just it being like a musical interlude. So it, which is like the farthest you can get from the usual Bollywood formula type movie making where, you know, you have like, oh, that even Aditya Chopra does with Doom, you know, it's like fight sequence, drama, song, fight sequence, drama, yeah. song. Like, it's very different. Um, so, yeah, that's what really stuck with me. 
Shagila, what did you think of the whole, like as a non-Londoner, what does the whole dance of Shava Challa setup kind of look like for you? Uh, you mean London in it or the songs themselves? Yeah, just the placement of it because I had issues with it. Like, I had serious issues with it, especially the dance off. But I don't know. I, maybe that's just my bias because I live here. Yeah, probably. But, I uh, think if it, because that's how I used to feel about stuff that was set in New York. It's like, oh yeah. come on, dude. You know. So I can I get that. Um, and also I feel like the I actually like the way London is presented in Young Hey. That felt a lot more organic to me and yet mm, magical. Yeah. Whereas in here, it was just like. Yeah, I didn't like the presentation of London here. I have to say, yeah. um, even though it was a hu- obviously I, a huge character. It, it's funny because you know, like Adele um, Mushkil is shot a lot in Shoreditch, and this is shot a lot in Canary Wharf, and there couldn't be a bigger difference between Dharma and Yashraj <laughs> when you look at those two neighborhoods in a way. Um, I just the, the main problem I had with uh, the dance of and Shava Shava is that. You literally have the best dancers of London and you have Katrina, who's an amazing dancer. And then you have Shah Rukh, who looks, he's, he's dressed like he's going to buy some dozen eggs or something like that. Like, I don't know why the dance off has to be between Shah Rukh and Katrina. I, I don't think it works really well, yeah. but then it works with Shava Shava. But I was just worried for my girl that she got like, you know, pneumonia because it's so cold there. You know, like, I don't know, you know, I was very like uh, aware of uh, how she's dressed the poor girl and like uh, dancing and everything. Everywhere that you know in the in the cold London weather, but it's it's weird seeing seeing it shot that way. I think they tried to do their best with the underground party and stuff like that. I just don't like Shah Rukh's look, his accent, the whole young part. It just most of it doesn't work for me. I really like even Challa, right? I don't think it works initially, but I think it really works when he's on the rocks and he's just singing next to the river. Yes. Yeah. I think that part really works, but it doesn't work when he's like weirdly singing with the guitar and yeah. in Canary Wharf. I wish the mm-hmm. dance off, I wish what they had done is, because you know how Yash Chopra has that motif where there's like a dance, instrumental dance. So that's what the yeah. underground dance was supposed to be, right? So, But I wish they had just mm-hmm. let Katrina do it. Like let her yes. have her like instrumental dance number that every Yashraj hero and Yash Chopra hero gets and then move it yeah. into Ishtrava and Shah Rukh can join her with Ishtrava I think Ar- yeah. Shah Rukh was very awkward in that time he, like, he, he did not know what he was doing like, come on, like he's not that level of dance no and, and having to do that in front of like a hundred really good dancers is not easy, you know. Like it, it, it just kind of pushes you in a corner. And I don't think it's it's it was Shah Rukh's strength. And I agree with you. They should have that dance should have been the rich spoil girl that it's kind of in a very protective bubble is finally letting go. Yeah, like right. It, that's what it was see, supposed if it to was be. Yash and Chopra, I don't think she that would have t- hmm. entitled it something like Freedom Dance or something, and it would have yes, been like her yeah. breaking out of her shell, you know, like. This yeah. is what I love about him, but I don't know why they didn't do that treatment. Yeah. And he loved the song. I just feel it's very short in the movie. Like, it's only like half of the song. And for the build up, like, the whole setup that they have is that Katrina is, you know, learning Punjabi to sing in front of her, uh, uh, her father. And it, like, only half the song. I just felt a bit short changed with that. The thing. I like the most about this soundtrack is actually not even the songs. It's the background theme with the Spanish guitar. Um, when Shah Rukh is just driving yeah. in Ladakh and, uh, yeah. and there's the guitar. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. I really like the title song for some reason. I, I remember back then I used to listen to it over and over on loop. I don't even know why. It's not that I think it's such a great song. Amrita, any final things? Anything we missed that we want to talk about for uh, Jabta Kajan? Um, there's one thing that just sort of came to me as I was watching the romantics and then I was watching this film, which is that nobody really mentioned in the romantics that when this movie came out, Kajol was on the outs with the Chopra clan because Son of Sardar was clashing with, um, Jabta Kejan and, uh, for some, I can't remember like what it was, but oh, I think it was that um, Ajay Devgan accused YRF of sabotaging his film by booking more theaters or something. Whereas, in fact, it was like just that 
the theaters were just like looking <laughs> at Jabta Kejan and Son of Sadar and were like, I think we know which one's going to work. Uh, but he went to court over it and it was during that period that Yash Chopra died. And I remember Ajay Devgan saying like, what the hell? Like, do you think I would have gone to court if I had known that this was going to play out this way? Like, he was absolutely devastated by the way that things worked out. But also, he was trying to, like, you know, pull a fast one. And then, of course, Kajol was being a good wife and, like, standing by her husband. And then Adi didn't invite her the, I think, the following year or the year after that to the uh, the Women of YRF event that they hosted. And uh, he didn't invite her. They they invited everybody else. Like there was Wahida Rahman, there was Rekha, there was Jaya Bachchan. Like Nanda came out, I think. Like it was like all the women that Yash Chopra and YRF had worked with and Kajol was left off the, the list. Um, and it was like, a, like, I guess like now everybody's cool again. But yeah, that was a it thing. Was- it was it got ugly i remember that like yeah. uh and uh, they went to court and i think it was tough because ajay was the producer of son of sardar and it was kind of like a business decision also yeah. mm-hmm. uh, because i do think there's probably some fact in that you know just uh, yashraj having that pull to be able to monopolize theaters but i think it just like went terribly for ajay devgan and i do feel he probably felt bad like how big of a thing it became and also it didn't help that his, his movie was kind of crap right so <laughs> if his movie was genuinely good uh then he might have had something some leg to stand on and it just you know kajol was kind of uh stuck in the middle and i don't think kajol and yashraj have worked since then together yeah yeah and she well I mean, she was in the romantic so. Yeah, in the romantics, yeah. I, I do think now things have settled down, I guess, yeah. The other thing also, remember when this movie came out, everybody was comparing it to The Hurt Locker? Just because uh, Shah Rukh was uh, uh, a bomb to see. Remember that? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh I God. even saw it in uh, Anupama Chopra's review of the movie. She mentioned the Hurt <laughs> Locker, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that was the whole thing." <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. I what I remember is the press tour. That was a very well, awkward press yeah. tour. That was the mm. one where Katrina kept like talking over, sh- not talking over, but like, uh, well, it depends on which lens you view it from. But it was very awkward between Sharon and Katrina. I think she was feeling very underappreciated as an actor and the press would treat yeah. her that way generally and uh, and also apparently so this is again from Amazon Prime in the trivia section apparently when they were shooting the movie Sh- uh, Shah Rukh and Katrina were getting along really well and they would take smoke breaks together and right. so there were all these photos of the two of them smoke, taking smoke breaks, um, breaks together and like sort of laughing and just being chill with each other. And of course, that started all the rumors that like, oh, Katrina's having an affair with Shah Rukh. Um, and they had to like actually make a statement about it and be like, actually, we're not having an affair. Like we're just shooting a movie, like leave us alone. Yeah. So I think like that was also part of it where she was in that weird, like, you know, like situation where she was moving from Salman to Ranbir. Um mm. And I don't think it was, like, easy for her to be in that relationship with Ranbir um, in, you know, like, people telling her she's not good enough, not just in the movie, but yeah. off the movie as well. Um, but, yeah, she was just treated badly all around. I don't think by Shah Rukh or Yash Chopra as such, but, yeah, um, yeah definitely. She was, yeah, it was she a was tough like time for Katrina. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where it, you could tell it's like she didn't want to just be acknowledged oh. for the dance. She didn't want to just be yeah. acknowledged for being a hard worker. Because that was the thing. It's like, oh, Katrina is such a hard worker. That's what everyone used to yeah. say about her. But no one would say that she's a good actor. And she really wanted yeah. that. Yeah. 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 So. And I also think, uh, I think people now have come around to Katrina. They understand her. They love her a bit more. But at that time, that wasn't the case. Like, you know, she doesn't speak Hindi and she's this and one boyfriend to the other. And, you know, all of these negative things that were happening, she were, were, that was kind of the peak. And she was doing like good work at that time. She just done, uh, Mere Brother Ki Dulhan. She didn't Chikni, Chikni Chameli. She done uh, Doom 3 just afterwards. Yeah. Um, so she was working on some big projects, but she wasn't getting, you know, the, the love the or respect. you could feel it. There was a lot of, 
yeah, the toxicity around her. And I think that has changed a lot. And we might have even forgotten how tough it was for her back in those days. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Shakila, any final thoughts before we wrap it up? Yeah, I think that was just the interesting, just coming back to why I had chosen it was because it is like that perfect mishmash of what yeah. Yashraj films had become too, where, you know, mm. like Aditya Chopra had taken over by that point. And uh, you, you know how the documentary ended with Yash Chopra saying like, I know this is my last film. I'm done. Yeah. And, I don't know. It's just all of that makes it like a very strange kind of experience mm. altogether. But did you like it though? Did you wa- like the movie? I, I did it. I mean, again, for me, it was like it had so much potential, but the whole mm. thing from beginning to end was just not the right. Like, I would like to rewrite that. Like, take the original end of the affair and turn it into <laughs> a movie movie that I feel Yash Chopra, mm. if he had full creative control, would have made. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Amrita? I think I did like it better this time around, mm. which is not a resounding, um, yeah. you know, like advocation for this um, particular film, but I did like it better. And I think Katrina and Shah Rukh in particular deserve a lot of credit for it working as much as it did. Yeah. For me, like the the final bridge scene worked really well, yeah. and I remember that part didn't wor- yeah. work. But now this time, just Katrina saying those lines out loud, it really got to me. I got a little bit emotional just this idea, and that felt very Yashraj, you yeah. know. Like you, you, uh, uh, what was it? I? I don't know what the line was exactly. Is like you weren't waiting for me; you were waiting for me to be ready, or something like that. To or, me, uh, mere liye sambhal ke rakha tha. Yeah, that was so beautiful, yeah. you know, that's yeah. such a beautiful line. And I think that's kind of the problem with uh, with the movie is that the line is beautiful. Everybody looks beautiful. But on the background, we also have to diffuse a bomb. <laughs> you know, like it's like <laughs> there's a lot going on, you know. So, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I w- waited for this moment to watch this movie because I actually like it a lot uh, even though it's it's not you know it's not the best soundtrack it's not the best uh, uh, yash chopra movie i think in a in the mind for a lot of people veer zara is his last movie and i think that is a very yash chopra movie and this might be more of kind of him handing over the baton to adi but i the parts i liked i really liked and i think even now rewatching it people can be a bit more positive of anushka and katrina and i think that what what didn't work for people back in the day this is the end of the episode. Shakila, where can people find you online? Uh, get underscore film me at Twitter. Amrita? Uh, you can find me at Amrita IQ on Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter, khandan.substack.com. I'm at Asim Bernie. Uh, thank you for listening to Khandan Podcast. Sign up to our Patreon from $1 and get access to extra content. And thank you for listening. We'll be back with the whole team very soon. <laughs> Girl, you're my time, I can tell you.